Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Circle of the World podcast, where we discuss Joe Abercrombie's first law series. I am one of your hosts, Lord Chamberlain Jeffrey, and here are my co-hosts. Arch Lecter George. And Harrison, the Adeptus Historical. As you all know, we're covering The Blade Itself, the first book in the original trilogy. Today, we'll be covering The House of the Maker on this episode. So let's get started. Just want to thank everybody again for all your support. And just another little reminder to follow us on social media, please. And <laughs> <laughs> and we're doing stuff on our YouTube page. Uh, Harrison has been pumping out videos like a rabbit making ooh, babies. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Nuts. <laughs> George, as we all know, is taking a sweet I'm still time. working on the same video, so yeah. <laughs> By the time it's called say- building anticipation, guys. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> what it is i swear to God. This, by the time the episode <laughs> airs george will should have at least released one video uh Pro- promise so. not like the last two episodes where we said the same thing right it's all good. <laughs> but he has actually been working on this so <laughs> listen you know, the heat in the uk is um unthinkable it, it's un- absolutely hurting. unbearable it's inconceivable <laughs> <laughs> so george has been dealing with that heat wave so please forgive him be patient but as the arch lector will have it out for you sh- shortly <laughs> maybe kind of hopefully <laughs> all right so let's get started with our first part of the chapter read through we're gonna break this up into three parts since it's a huge chapter uh so the chapter starts off with Glockta's point of view as he's following Baez and company to the house of the maker. Glockta still thinks that Baez is a charlatan, but there is a bit of a nagging thought that maybe, just maybe, he might be who he says he is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, his mind is just full of all these questions as they make their way to the university. You know, like, why did Baez choose Luthar? Why did Baez choose me? Why? What the fuck is going on? He's so confused. <laughs> He's just got uh, that complete investigator's mindset at all times, just 24-7. Mm-hmm. He notices the practicals watching them from uh, from the alleyways and roofs, and he's just like, yep, we're mm-hmm. ready. We're ready to get him. He's just. Comp- mm-hmm. This is like the bit in a, in a heist film or a um, like a detective film or something mm-hmm. where, you know, they're about to get the bad guy and it's all, everybody's ready and it's all gearing up and then it just, it just never happens. It just hits the fan, right? Yeah, and it's just, oh, wow. If if this was like a modern day detective show, Glockta would definitely be the grizzled vet that smokes ten <laughs> packs of cigarettes a day, and like has a has just a, a traumatized past, <laughs> which is what he does. <laughs> yeah, um, he, he, you get like the the uh, noir music playing in the background every single time he thinks he's like this old bastard. He he's gonna get caught at some point. He thinks he can get away with this. <laughs> oh shit! Like a saxophone plays. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth jazz playing yeah. in the background. <laughs> Adua ate the city it used to be. <laughs> I'm an inquisitor, see? <laughs> <laughs> Ever since the war, all I can see is depression. <laughs> and teeth. <laughs> teeth everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking stairs. <laughs> uh, I also like how Bias here is already just like talking to Giselle. Like, just I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> He's like, oh, the city was so much smaller back when I, back whenever I was here last time. <laughs> just I was like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> right. I love this. I love this because at first, Glockta, you know, as they're making their way through the university, Glockta can tell that uh, Baez is actually pretty familiar with the university, right? So that's something. Then the point of view switches over to Giselle, who, like you said, is on the receiving end of Baez's grandfatherly stories. Uh, although these stories are a bit more violent than your usual ramblings from an old man. <laughs> and I like how Giselle gets particularly affronted when Baez says that the original people of Mitterland were primitives. He's like, my ancestors couldn't be primitives. How dare the gall of this man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love how Giselle just constantly like even it gets you can see it pro- progress later on, but like Giselle's view on how he sees the world and how he sees people is always like a little out of touch. <laughs> even mm-hmm. later on. <laughs> yeah. Uh 
And also, so then our point of view switches again, this time to Logan's perspective. And from his view, uh, they, uh, they make their way to an older man who's just sitting in the courtyard. Um, uh, I think that's just Al's perspective. Is it? Yeah. Hold on. Let's uh, <coughs> cut that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the, when they're walking up to the university, it's Glockters, and then in the university, it's um, Giselle's, and then outside the House of the Maker, it's... Oh, no, no, you do meet the guard with no, him. No, but... it's, it's Logan. It is oh, Logan. shit, yeah, shit, sorry, sorry. Cut that bit out. No, <laughs> it's all good. Um, shit, where am I now? Okay, so our point of view switches again, this time to Logan's perspective. And from his point of view, they're, you know, they make their way to an older gentleman who's chilling in the courtyard. And this guy is the chief warden and apparently the only one in his company. <laughs> and and, Bias is quite a myth about this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just like this grand ostentation. Like, oh, there used to be uh, like, like, 50 of the best bias. men. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, this irks him, you know? <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? This is supposed to be like a high honor. Uh, 50 the bravest men like he said it was like what the fuck and then the guy's just like i don't know this has been when i was younger it was nine of us now it's just me and yeah. i don't know who's gonna take over for me after i'm dead <laughs> it's like what the fuck and yeah, it's like, it, like you said uh, who, who who just did bias's imp- impersonation like i am i, I, I did <laughs> Do it again <laughs> because he just is like all right <clears throat> I, he's like okay yeah he's like he's like okay okay we can still have the ceremony I am Bias, the <laughs> first of the major. <laughs> he does his little intro speech, which is always hilarious. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then the guy's like, you sure? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yes. I mean, some other guy tried to enter the house years ago, and uh, they came back in five minutes. And they looked like they all had seen ghosts. So, yeah. and then I Giselle's re- a- go ahead. I was just going to say, I just whenever he first comes up to him, too, like, Bias is like, are you the warden? And he's like, yeah, I'm eating breakfast. <laughs> and he's like, my wife's making breakfast. And then he's all like, it's eggs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and like, Bias is like, okay. Like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> and Bias is like, like eggs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so like, he's, like he's, he's expected this in, enormous guard force and he's got to, you know, prove that he's Bias and get across the bridge and it's just one fucking dude sitting on a chair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's all patting his belly and shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Also, I do really like this note whenever it's still in Giselle's point of view and how, um, in a lore aspect, and how Baez says he fought he fought the Maker's servants. <clears throat> it's interesting he says fought, seeing as we know what Baez can do. It makes you wonder what kind of equipment his servants had, being uh, uh, students of Canadius, if they had some kind of, like, you know, advanced weaponry. <laughs> you know, they had, like, fucking p- pistols and shit. <laughs> I don't know. You know, some kind of something that would put them on par with the Magi. Um, obviously the Magi beat them. It's just cool to think about what kind of interesting devices, maybe they had armor on or some kind of anti-magic or anti-high uh, art uh, material. I don't know. Just very that would interesting be incredible. to think about. That would um, have been, if Joe can write a little prequel short story of that little episode, that'd be awesome. Yeah, have them storming the house. just a maker. techno monster. <laughs> 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 I just thought that was interesting. He says fought them, not like crush them or, oh, this is where we, you know, the, the the servants flee and fl- fled in terror or whatever. No, he fought them. I just thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is very interesting. Nice. Going back to the story that the guy told the warden told about some dude that went to try to enter the house of the maker. Uh, Giselle is a little bit disturbed at that story. <laughs> He's like, um, what happened to them? <laughs> He's like, I don't know. But, scared. Yeah, but Bias is too, he's impatient. He's like, fuck this, we're going. So they cross the courtyard, they go up some stairs, and then finally they get to a gate. So then uh the guy opens the gate and he's like, Welcome to the maker's breath. Woo! Which is like <laughs> I guess like this foreboding like feeling, right? It's um this like all encompassing wind or something, just like a, a sense of unease. So they're going over so they start going over a bridge, right? Uh, yeah. And they're not feeling good. Like this perspective goes back to Glock at this time, and they're not feeling good. And the the bridge has no rails, no safety features at all. <laughs> that is a they said it's as wide as a man laying down. <laughs> and Glock yeah, it's like, it's like a, a cat bridge. I think yeah. they call it. Yeah, and Glock was like he noted that Giselle and uh, Logan were like 
looking very uh, disturbed by this whole by this bridge. And so can you imagine Glockta's worries compounded by the fact that, you know, he has one functioning leg, basically. <laughs> yeah, that'd be absolutely terrifying. <laughs> like, yeah. If he slips, he's toast. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh, as they get closer to the house, the size of the, the house of the maker becomes much more uh, intense. Intense. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a good word to say. Yeah. I mean, Glock is worried about falling off the bridge. He's just worried about the size of the house. The whole situation at hand. He knows that the practicals are watching, like you said, George. But not they wouldn't be able to do anything if Glock the falls or something. <laughs> like yeah. they have to wait for them to come back in order to like get arrested. So everyone in the group is feeling this whole, like we said, this overwhelming sense of fear, uh, something innate. And the closer they get to the house, the worse they feel. Except for Bias, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I feel sorry for the maker's servants if they had to live with that all the time. Bloody hell. Well, I imagine, don't you think maybe that the maker might have imbued them with some kind of antidote or something? Maybe, but it does mm-hmm. seem like a bit of a, a bit of a pragmatist, you know? Yeah, he's probably like, fuck well, it. Just, just get on with it. Yeah, just deal with it. Well, here's the <laughs> thing, right? Is that it says, <clears throat> speculate a little bit here. It says, you know, Glock just feels like an animal's, mm-hmm. animalistic sense of fear. And... You know, it's fear is something that can be overcome, but these guys are just got here and they're already intimidated by the house. They don't know where the fuck they're going. They mm. don't know why Bias isn't affected. It's all around a weird situation. Bias has been here before. He lived here before. He says, can you feel it? I think he feels it too, but he knows, he knows what he's dealing with at that point. And so, because he's been here many, many times. Um, I don't think it's even like a magical thing. I think it's like a, um, I, it, obviously it's a magical thing. I don't mean... I don't think Baez has some kind of magical shield or something like that. I think that he is just uh, used. He's been used mm. to that feeling. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Or it might have something to do with the fact that he's, he's a magus and he's just more magically in tuned. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or it could be the fact that Baez has absolutely no regrets and fears nothing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Never know. It could be. It could be all of them combined. <laughs> it could be. It could be. Um, they make it to the door of the house, right? And there are apparently two circles engraved in the door. Uh, one large, one small. And the circles are comprised of letters that they're in a language that's unfamiliar to the group, except, of course, for Bias. Uh, they all end up basically puking <laughs> while Bias lovingly caresses the door. <laughs> and yeah, it's a bit creepy, isn't it? It's just like... You know, mm. everybody stood there and they're they waiting to get in. And Bias is just like, look at it. It's beautiful. Yeah, but it's don't forget, they're, need... they're on their knees. They're on their knees like yakking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bias is just like, now that is craftsmanship. Yeah, right. And he, com- he makes a comment about the quality of the maker's works compared to Juven's uh, as to how the maker's works have lasted, whereas all of Juven's, you know, uh, achievements lie in ruins, which is like, hmm, interesting. Yeah, it's. <clears throat> it is interesting to think about how uh, Canadius' works, and this isn't the last we see of it, it lasts for so long. Like, they, they, they're not even touched by time. Nope. Um, and, they're impervious. Yeah, and, and you look at the great northern libraries, uh, library and other libraries that we might see in the future, and th- they're all run down because they were built by juvens. Yes, they have magic around them, but they're just stone. Whereas mm-hmm. this is, like, something different. And yeah. the... As a note here before we move on too far, is that the wards around the door is 11 wards and 11 wards reversed. Um, and Which is a fantastic sort of, um, it's just vague enough so that you yeah. don't really know what it means. And then just, it, it tickles your imagination, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it it, it's it's cool to think about like this this thing, it's, it's like a big lock. It's like a big... Um, you know what a ward is, so you know a ward is supposed to protect you from magic or whatever, pr- protect things. And so to say eleven wards, you're like, oh, that's a lot of wards. And eleven wards reverse makes it sound even more like, whoa. <laughs> 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 and then doesn't he say eleven times eleven as well? Uh, like hmm. it's it's like a lot of wards apparently. Hold on. Uh, yeah, he 11. does. I think he does say that. Yeah, yeah, eleven wards and eleven wards are. Re- re- Reversed, he traced the circle of smaller characters and 11 times 11. And as yeah. his finger followed the fine line outside of them. Oh, so that might be another circle then. Yeah, there are multiple Ooh. circles going yeah. in and around. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, he says, Who can say how many hundreds here? Truly a most potent enchantment. 
Okay. Just to uh, edit for anybody that doesn't keep an account, that's 143 wards total. Holy shit, bro. Jesus, that's a lot of wards. That's a lot of wards. That oh, is a man. lot of wards. And then they're all reversed. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> the, uh, the only time we always see, ma- whenever things are written down in mm-hmm. the first law from Magic, it's extremely potent. It's not very often we get to see it, but it won't be the first last time we see this 11 wards and 11 wards reversed. And the other kind of writing we've seen are is the writing on the Great Northern Library that we've discussed previously and how it basically, if you're looking to harm the people or harm the, the library, you're never going to find it. That's, mm. that's incredibly powerful. Mm. And if you are, um, there's another character who has writing all over his body. And we haven't seen him in action yet, but by God. Mm-hmm. Well, we have seen him. In action? Oh, in action. No, no. no but we know yet. that the uh, the runes on Fenris, the feared, they sort of, um, you know, they protect him from damage. And I find it quite interesting that there's like sort of this other element of magic that it's more uh, more permanent, like, uh, like you said, Jeff. So mm-hmm. once it's down and it's written then it can't be reversed or it's like all of the magi's magic it's very you know it's process based it's in the moment right mm. yeah well, i it's... think uh, i think uh, harrison said that about the it written being ever down right? oh yeah yeah of course i uh, know mm. but you you mentioned um i think you mentioned it before but uh oh right 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 but uh, harrison you were gonna say something i was just gonna say um i agree with you guys yeah it's just interesting to think about the different aspects of the magic because he says that there are three types of magic, as we've talked about before. You know, spirits and the Gwars of Canadius and his uh, and high art is what Bias says. But there's some other mysterious elements going on, like the long eye or the runes. Um, and it's, I don't know, I just really like those little mysteries mm-hmm. that are mm-hmm. scattered about. Yeah, it always, how I read to me before what, what they talked about Juven's being the one with the high art i was like but i mean come on no one's making materials like that without some magic involved in there you know mm. <clears throat> and i do like that like throughout the whole series we get you know we get descriptions and and things that the spoilers but can be used by like the canadians made mm-hmm. but we never get any sort of solid description on how this, any of this works Right. That's true. We get because no... obviously the only person that has, or the only people that have knowledge of this, is well, Bias, and Bias um, keeps his cards very close to his chest. Yeah. Well, yeah, very... it's the, the the works of the Master Maker are carried on by very few, and remember, even Canadius didn't let other people share it. Like the only reason that other people know how to use high art is because Juven purposely shared his knowledge with the intention of having apprentices and such. That's the only reason high art is even like a, a, I don't want to say a common thing. It's still rare, but like a, a thing that's known. Whereas yeah. Canadius kept all of the knowledge to himself and a few others. But even then it, it's not even as potent as how much he knew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Well, we well, they're outside the door, and they're still puking. So Baez, he reaches into his little cloak or whatever. He grabs his key, and he inserts it into the door. Uh, even Glock is like, there's no hole, but okay. <laughs> and there's a singular click. <laughs> and then Glock turns around. He's like, oh, thank God it didn't open. And he's like, he turns around. He's about to signal the practicals, I guess, to beat their asses. <laughs> and then there are more clicks. And then he's like, what? And the next thing he knows... The door opens smoothly. Apparently, this group is the first to enter since Bias sealed the house all those years ago. And they enter. So that's the first part of our chapter read through. Any notes since we're going to save the ratings till the end? No, I think, I think we're good. I did, I did like... Um, I do like how... Um, sorry. Go ahead. I like how... Um, <clears throat> Baez just basically like stands in front of the the door to the house of the maker. We did say that say this earlier, but uh, and everyone's just obviously uncomfortable, and he's just like relishing the moment because, mm-hmm. you know, uh, with the confrontation in the previous episode with uh, Arch like to so, and then before that with Glockter as well, he's just really reveling in this moment where he wins. He's beaten them. Like, look, oh. like I actually can do it. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed the little Lord of the Ring reference too. 
Uh, you shall not pass. Yeah. None shall pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. I wonder how fast things went downhill with the Warden's company. Like, after Baez left the union to his own devices, you know, and he went to just read in the library for all those years. Like, how fast did the the 50 people that were supposed to guard the the gate to the House of the Maker they just, they just crap out, you know? I'm I think that's it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, there aren't really any credible threats to the House of the Maker. Right. Like, no. nobody can really get up there. No. If, but anybody that would be able to get up there, like Baez or maybe even some Eaters or something, the f- even fifty guys, even the bravest fifty guys in the uh, the King's Own, aren't really going to stand a chance. Yeah, right. and so and the, if you th- go ahead, I was just going to uh, you know agree and say that the Baez was there about a couple hundred years ago uh, during King Casimir as mm-hmm. uh, Lord Zoller and. They see, he seems to have not been surprised then, as far right. as we know. Otherwise, he would have mentioned that. Right, mm-hmm. and Bieloveld, Bieloveld, remember yeah. he was him too. So he, yeah, he would have noticed then. So he was gone for what two hundred years, or yeah. was it? Uh, yeah, more than two hundred years. More than two hundred years. Okay, all right. Well, but this is why you got to keep on top of things. You got to be a micromanager, by as Jesus. Ah. I can imagine though, like you know, someone who was born and comes into power, like. You know, maybe a hundred years after Baez go disappears, and they're just like, "Well, if we got the fifty best guys all stood around the house of the maker for no reason, <laughs> like that, you know how much it costs to outfit and pay five, 50 dudes?" <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. And they're the bravest. We need to put them somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. It's all, it's also <laughs> just funny. this one guy will do. <laughs> <laughs> just the one guy. It, I just I think it's was well, a volunteer position, right? So the education in the union, as the deaths is historical has pointed out is uh it's kind of shitty um mm. and so maybe that's part of it is that in recent years it's been less so about you know learning and going the university was also in its peak probably around the time that you know 200 years ago whenever he was arch lector whenever uh Bias was arch lector mm-hmm. so they seem to all have all been failing uh since that time you know, education wise, and maybe that's part of the reason because you have to volunteer for the position. Because the guy says he joined when he was like a young guy, joined not was conscripted. So, mm. and um, I do think it's funny. It's almost like a play off of the wall inside of the Game of Thrones. How you know that even though there's not as many men in the Night's Watch, they're like honorable and they're protecting it from the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> from, yeah. the, from the wildlings and from the white walkers and everything and uh-huh. there's just one guy who likes eggs <laughs> <laughs> eggs eggs <laughs> i like eggs thank you um and i like how he just lives there with his wife as well <laughs> yeah just chilling <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the door opening is really cool as well yeah. Uh, oh yeah definitely just imagining it i would love to see that one day it'd be so cool on the screen just to see uh, it all unwinding yeah, yeah, that would be really cool to see that. Uh, I like also how Glockta doesn't trust or obviously like the group at all, but he's intrigued by Logan because he's like, this guy is a fucking enigma, <laughs> and what is his purpose? Like, he even like asks himself, like, maybe Bias works for Logan. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it was weird. Yeah, yeah. He was just so confused by like, what the fuck is Logan's purpose? And my last note is, I just love how out of his depth. Uh, Giselle is. He's just so confused. So oh, why he's what here. am I doing here? <laughs> Literally two days ago, this man won the final in the contest, and now he's entering the house of the maker with some old dude who's just blathering on. He's confused. He's so confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's great. It's already a great start to a chapter. Well, that's just uh-huh. Giselle for the whole book, isn't it? Like, it's it's just, why am I here? Why am I doing this? Why, why aren't I getting drunk? <laughs> Oh, any other notes on your end, guys, for uh, this part? No. Okay. All right. So now we move on to our next segment, which is the best meme of the week. Want to take this over? Yeah. And uh, we have user faithful carrot 34 on Reddit to thank for this meme. And it's a part of uh, the House of the Meme Makers memeing every chapter, which continues to be absolutely fantastic. And they haven't missed a day in 41 chapters. So congrats to those guys. Well, except for uh, that I'm not one gonna, that I did. Except that one that you did that you missed. You you fucking letting the team down, man. <laughs> well, I, I, I missed one too. <clears throat> you, you motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I was punctual with the first chapter I signed up for, but then the last one, which was actually this chapter, House of the Maker, I completely just shit the bed. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to describe this one because it describes the chapter that we haven't done yet. So, but uh, yeah, give that one a look. We're going to put it in the description in uh, all the platforms. So, thank you very much, user Faithful Carrot Thirty Four. Faithful Carrot. Mm-hmm. That's a good name. <laughs> That's a great name. Fantastic name. <clears throat> All right. So now we've returned to our second uh, read through of the ch- chapter, you know, House of the Maker. And we come to Giselle's point of view, and he isn't feeling too good as they start to make their way through the House of the Maker, is he? He's not well. Uh, at all. <laughs> he's not well. Uh, the, you know, it was so it looks like the nausea only uh, occurred once they got cl- close to the door. Uh, once <laughs> they got past the door, it doesn't, it seems like they're not affected uh in terms of being sick anymore but again that sense of foreboding that weird fear that just a a wave of not pleasant feelings and i love the description of um picking up a cup of water and think it's going to be water and finding piss instead <laughs> like you could just everyone could imagine what that feels like. It's like, oh yeah, that does feel pretty fucking horrible. <laughs> Joe's was so good at those those lines, man. Yeah. And I love how a, this right here is a callback to what we just said, where he could not understand why he had to be here. Like he knows very little bit about history. He knows these names: Canadius, Juvens, Bias. He is very on a surface level that he's familiar with, and. They enter the house of the maker, and Giselle is just dumbfounded. He's just dumbstruck by like how big it is. It's how huge it is from the inside too. He's like this shit. He could fit the entire Agrion, I think he says, or the Lord's Round itself could have fit comfortably inside the entire building with room to spare. So yeah, I like to think that this is sort of it's sort of like a TARDIS. Like the the outside view of the house of the maker is just completely different from how it is on the inside. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm lucky. Lucky enough, I have started watching Doctor Who with my girlfriend a few weeks ago. So I. Oh thank God! I thought that was a bit of a an obscure reference. But Doctor Who isn't that obscure, is it? No, no. <laughs> widely known. <laughs> okay, okay, not obscure at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> no wait, George, you haven't lost your nerd card. All right, you're still one of us. <laughs> I'm still trying to make sure I'm like approved for the nerd card. <laughs> um, so still they're processing. In- Still processing. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> These damn agencies. Um, the, up above the center of this giant, like you could say, lobby, you know, uh, there's a. <laughs> I don't know why that worked. That's a good point. But... <laughs> so basically, a, a well, lobby. You go, in the heyday, you go in there, there's like a fucking a gyroscope in the sky. There's a huge map on the floor, and there's a fucking receptionist. <laughs> right. like, Hi, welcome to the house of the maker. Oh How can God. I direct you? <laughs> <laughs> What's the reason for your visit today? <laughs> oh, I'm um, sorry. I'm, Mr. I'm Canadius gonna... is booked up today. <laughs> oh, so I can't kill him today? Oh, I have to come back. Another... Okay, okay. But his daughter is, is free for a... <laughs> his daughter's here. His daughter's free oh, for she... a working. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. So there's a giant thing hang, like suspended in the air, right? Uh, like, what'd you call it? A gyroscope? Yeah, it's like a, not a, I don't know, a gyroscope? Like, um, I don't fucking know. Like, not a kaleidoscope, a gyroscope. It's, it's giant. The way it's described, it sounds more like, like an astrological model. So like a solar system, I, okay, I imagine. Okay, there you go. That makes sense. Oh, like that. Ooh, isn't that interesting, right? None of these guys have looked into like the sky. Like, that's not a thing that people do inside the first law. And like, Canadius did, though. And so he knows what the stars are like. But they're all like, what is this thing? But... He knows, Canadius knows, oh, this is the other planet. That's, mm. that's a cool thought. I like that. And, and there's a large black ball that hangs in the center. And Baez is already walking out. And they, like you, you just mentioned it too, that the floor is basically a giant map of Midderland. Actually, it's uh, the whole circle of the world. You know, uh, you know, name drop for the podcast. And, you know, he points out Angland, Starikland, the North, Gurkle, you know, Old Empire, all that jazz. And the Logan is like the edge of the world. And he's just like, wow. <laughs> and then Glock does just like, this motherfucker is arrogant to think that <laughs> yeah. home is the center of everything. <laughs> and then Baez is like, yeah, well, the, n- n- they were all arrogant, the maker and his brothers. And it's right? quite interesting to think how um, 
you know, this is how most people would have thought of the world, you know, it, it, before you have like aerial views of things, before you know what, you know, that the planet is a sphere, although I'm sure they have figured that out at this point, even if it is a sphere. I do like to think that um, the, the world here is literally just, you know, it's a big flat world and it's just circular. <laughs> so it's literally the circle of the world, you know? <laughs> uh, so the flat earthers get their moment to shine from this book. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, there's something here for everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just get Joe... ready for our next vid- theory video. Is uh, the, f- <laughs> the circle it... of the world, the flat earth, right? <laughs> uh, gotcha. Okay. All right. George with the tinfoil constantly. Loving it. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so... The he and he realized that the the strange device that's hanging is moving. It's like spinning, it revolving, and he doesn't know how it could be moving because it seems to be self-operated. Uh, what else? Well, it's oh, like what? one of those things that indefinitely move if you once you get it going, mm, like a perpetual motion machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which is mm. something. It's like, of course, is absolute magic for in, for anybody like even a hundred years ago you're like what the fuck <laughs> how does that happen <laughs> i mean so, it is still magic because it's impossible isn't it <laughs> right yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. and then giselle uh he's getting very dizzy by the the movement of that and then like everything's moving the the floor the like it's spinning at least in his eyes Oh, that's just, it's just a horrific feeling. Like, you don't know what's oh, turning. Shit. That must be so disorientating. And I'm trying mm. to think, what is the purpose of this? What's the uh, purpose of just having everything turning like a fucking Helter Skelter all the time? Well, here's well, the may- thing. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Jeff. I here. was just going to suggest that maybe because since Baez is the only one that, uh, I guess we could say, is imbued with the magical properties, that for anybody else that isn't doesn't like have... Uh, high art or any kind of magic that just the house of the maker is almost imperceptible to you. Mm. It's sort of like, um, sorry, go ahead. Harrison. No, go ahead. George, you're going to, I kind of, I'm thinking like, this is sort of like, um, I don't know if you guys have read any, uh, HP Lovecraft, but, um, when they go to relay in, uh, call of Cthulhu, it's, it's sort of described this sort of same way that it's sort of imperceptible. Like you said, you can't mm-hmm. really understand what you're looking at. So it all just looks a bit funny. Mm, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and I, I think that is quite interesting. Uh, a parallel, so to speak. Yeah. That Harrison is really Wilton. cool. I, I like that idea and it probably is part of it, but I will say that we know, as I think he says it here in just a bit, that this place used to be bustling with people, like all of the makers, uh, servants, and um, you know his students and things like that. They all used to run around in the house of the maker, and surely not all of them were magically uh, imbued. I guess is the word you used, and it's mm. um, and I wonder if it has to do with the fact that you kind of just get used to the way it is. Um, Canadius built built it for himself. But he also eventually had people living in there with him. But he probably he either taught them tricks on how to move around, um, because or maybe they just learned it on their own. You got used to the disorientation. You got used to the door of fear. Uh, mm. You know, you you got used to oh yes, if I wait for this door to pass, I'm, that's the, the second one is the one I go into. And plus, if you got lost a hundred years ago or or five hundred years ago in this case, then it wouldn't be a big deal because there'd be other people in those other rooms to tell you, oh, you went the wrong way, mate. Go the other, go back. <laughs> <laughs> the House of the Maker employs tour guides back in its heyday. <laughs> yeah, with yeah. the <laughs> And I, I like to think of the the kind of wonders that you'd find if you just wandered off and had a look around. Wonders uh, or horrors? Oh, horrors! Yeah, it's like yeah. you imagine hundred years ago. Oh, you're looking for the biological experimentation lab. Oh no, this is the bottomless pit. Sorry, you, you got to go back down that way. <laughs> yeah, it's like an evil <laughs> layer. Yeah, <laughs> I like to think that the rock itself is from the other side, and that's why it's untouchable, and that mm. everything he makes is from the other side. Um, except it's been with his art, with, with, with his art, with his magic, he's able to keep it to where it's not going to explode. He uses wards and uses magic. So in this room is as close as you can get to the other side safely is inside mm. of the house of the maker mm. because it's all around you. And so it's, it's like you guys said, it's also just hard to comprehend. Mm. I like, I like that. it. I like that. Mm, the nice. other side made flesh. 
<laughs> um, and so Giselle's confused, right? And then Baez is like, "Not that way!" And he's like, "Oh shit, oh, sorry, way. my bad, that my way. bad." That way. And, and uh, the echo, you know, like you said, is echoing. And then we switch over p- point of views to Logan, and Logan is not a fan of this place at all either. He's just like, "Fuck this place! This place sucks." Uh, and he keeps thinking like he's being watched, but it's only just Luthar and and Glockta. There's nobody else. And they're all just worried and confused. <laughs> I can only imagine their faces just like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then Bias is talking about how they chased him through these halls. Uh, all 11 of them, except all the Magi together for the last time. All but Kalul. Uh, Zacharis and Conil, they fought the maker there. And he's just naming uh, Magi. Two of them died. It looks I like, like I like that we get with some more um, information on the major here. We get Zacharis, <laughs> Kalul, Corneal, Anseli, and Broken Tooth, <laughs> who I, I like I, to think was from the north. Yeah, I think so too. There's no way he wasn't, right? <laughs> and Broken Tooth is definitely from the north. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they talked about they kept you know going through uh, the house. There's a Black pit that Glock is like, I think there should be water down there, surely, right? There's what the fuck? And he's like, Where's the ceiling? And then everyone's just, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's yeah. just complaining. Everyone's just complaining. Like Luther's like, This place stinks. And then Logan, <laughs> Logan's like, Yep, it smells like fucking flatheads. Shanka. Well, actually, Harrison, that's your cue. <laughs> fucking flatheads. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It- and, the uh, I I do like here like you guys are talking about all the characters have their own things that they're doing it 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 is so perfect for each of their characters. Bias is just like ex exposi- uh, what's the word um expositing ex- expositing yeah. thank you um and Logan is like I don't understand this I don't understand this help me dear God and yeah. just, I was like why am I here <laughs> like this isn't where I belong and Glock this place feels- smells yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Glock is the only one who is actually like, wait a minute, this is fucking weird. Like, are we thinking about this? Are we thinking about where we're going? There's no water. There's no rails. What? Is, what? <laughs> Why aren't you asking questions? <laughs> He's probably like, this is all a trick some way, somehow. He's still lying. <laughs> yeah. Um, And then we get a little tidbit about the Shanka because... Bias tells us and tells Logan that Canadius created them. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know if we mentioned that in an earlier episode. I feel like we did, but I'm not we so did. sure. We, but yeah, we, we did yeah. a little bit, but we did. Um, he, he well, I, he I find it clay. interesting that, um, sorry, yeah, like you were saying, like he took clay and metal and leftover flesh. But so far from what we've seen of the Shanker, they just seem to be just flesh. So I don't know, maybe he's like clay for the bones or something. Well, I know they're gray in color, and I know that uh, there's a lot of variety, right, in terms of like how they look, just like Mm -hmm. the the misshapenness of them. Tell you what, you guys, audience members, go watch the uh, my lore lore, lore video (laughs) on the Shanka, and you (laughs) you can go find out more there. (laughs) Absolutely. All right. So (laughs) nice, nice little uh, shameless plug there. Love that. (laughs) <laughs> and then, uh, so he Canadians created them to fight in the war against the Magi, against Juvens. Uh, he bred the first Shanka, and then you know the only purpose was just to breed and destroy. And uh, they tried to hunt them after Canadius's death, but uh, they couldn't catch them all. They're not Ash Ketchum, and they're not Pokemon. They're not Pokemon, and so they were in the darkest corners of the world, and then. And then Logan's just staring at Baez like, what the fuck? And then Luthor is like, Shanko. <laughs> so yeah. And then Logan's like, is there something funny here? And then he's like, well, I mean, like, everyone knows. Like, There's no such thing as Shanko. Huh? And then Logan snaps. He's like, you motherfucker. They killed my wife, my children, my friends. And he's like, the North is swarming with them. And then Lo- Luthor is just like, what the fuck? And he's looking at Glockta for support. But Glockta's just like, I don't give a fuck. I'm even, I am suffering <laughs> right he's now. Kinda, he's like trying to hobble along. He's like, can we just fucking move? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we switch point of views again to Glockta. Uh, and 
they're just going through another hall, an enormous one. Just and he's just like, oh, maybe I can understand if I can just like stop for a second and look, but I just don't get it. And, and Luthar and Glockta and Logan again, they're not feeling good. And then <laughs> Glockta asks him some questions. Though he asks Bias like, where does the light come from? And Bias is just like, mm, above. <laughs> he's like, <"Girl." laughs> and he goes, are there windows? He's like, maybe. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he's like, is there nothing but hallway? What's the point of it? And then Bias is like, who can know the maker's mind or fathom his great design? He's like, this motherfucker is not giving him any answers. No straight <laughs> answers. Uh, and then here's where the part I think, uh, Harrison, you mentioned that uh, a long time ago that there was plenty of people, hundreds of people lived here in happier times. You know, they yeah. served Can- Canadius and they uh, helped him in his works. Uh, and so eventually near the t- near the end, only three people lived there. Uh, C- Canadius himself, his assistant, Jeremias, Jeremias, and his daughter, Ptolemy. And the maker's daughter. And then he, he asked what him, of he's, it? Like, he's like, maker's daughter? He's like, what of it? He's like, nothing. Nothing at all. He's like, hmm. <laughs> and then he goes, when did you live here? And then Bias is like, there is such thing. as too many questions. And then he's like, and then Glockta watched him walk away. And this is it. He was like, Salt was wrong. Yeah, uh, he underestimated this Bias and it cost him. Like, who could this guy be? And it's like, the answer is not so strange. The first of the Magi. And here we'll leave off. What do you guys think about this this so far of this section of the chapter? I think it's just a fantastic... We get so much exposition. We get so much character work all crammed into this tiny thing. And it's just such an alien sort of environment. And it's it's just such a good good chapter. Yeah, we're we're just as confused as everybody except for by us. (laughs) Right, especially for a first-time reader. George, what are your thoughts on like whenever Galacta basically accepts the fact that you know Bias is who he says he is? I think it is quite interesting because obviously this I've been I've said before like he, he's been faced with incontrovertible evidence that Bias is who he says he is, but he's just gone nope, no, nope, and just looked every other way, and it takes this much for him to actually go shit, yeah. Like this is actually real. This isn't just some some facade. Yeah, it's indisputable at this point. The but he still doesn't know up. really how to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He right. still kinda like pretends. <laughs> He's like, okay, well <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, it's like a huge paradigm shift, you know, for like his belief system or like how he think the thinks the world works. That's true. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's gonna, it's it, gonna be... it, Go ahead. It would be going back to <laughs> what you said a few episodes ago that Baez is like Jesus Christ. It would be like you met actual Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, he's real? Like, I have a lot like... of sins to uh, account for. Um, do I explain? Like, I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> you know, some people probably end up trying to kill him, kill Jesus, just to be like, I, I, can't, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with being judged. Oh, shit, he's actually here. Let's kill him. <laughs> <laughs> That's or another. to play the, to your noir effect, too. It's like, this is the moment he's like, it just occurred to me, however. That Bias could, in fact, be the first of the Magi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> uh, anything else about this uh, section, guys? Uh, no, I think we covered it good then. Okay, so. sweet, sweet. So let's move on to our character spot. <laughs> Who wants to take this one? I, I got it. No, yeah, Okay. Hit us Did we even get his name, guys? His we, name is, is <coughs> the chief. <coughs> his name is Chief Warden Eggs. <laughs> chief Warden Eggs. <laughs> yes, our character spot today is Chief Warden. I like eggs. <laughs> and he, he really, he really is something special. <laughs> it's just supposed to be this honorary post, and I just love this line for breakfast. I like eggs. <laughs> and, and he's like, what? <laughs> He's like this completely incompetent you. old man. He just doesn't know what he's doing. He's, he's been sat on this chair for 50 years. He's like, this is a pretty sweet job. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, like, he is probably, like, the one of the most, like, upstanding, happy motherfuckers out of here. Like, in the entire first law, he's just so giddy. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I, and I know, like, we know for a fact. Well, I don't know if he's like, he doesn't know anything. I mean, he knows pretty. He knows enough to be like, yeah, you don't want to go towards the maker's breath. Like, well, here's you know. the thing, right? Is that he actually, you know, he knows all the right stuff to say. He he does go. He knows the process. You know that he, he does know how to do his duty. It's just it's a chill duty. Like, why would you need to do it? No one ever does. It's only happened twice, but he, I do like how, even though he, he, he's not lazy, well, he, you could say he's lazy, right? But it's less so that he just doesn't have anything to do. He knows what to do. He just, mm. no one ever, he never gets to do his job. So. And let's be serious. Like you wouldn't take it that seriously. Yeah, exactly. exactly. If, if, you know, you were just going to be stood there for the next 20 years, like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm just gonna chill here. I'm I'd be excited that. for eggs as well. Yeah, eggs yeah. Are delicious. Exactly. Eggs. You, think about this. This is his life, right? He lives up there. He, you know, maybe every now and then he recites his words that way, just in case somebody comes up. He knows what to do. This is only, you know, he takes a little bit of pride in his job. And you know, every night, every every night, you get to go home, fuck your wife in the morning. She makes you eggs. I mean, that's the life right there. He's got a good life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's probably the best, the most well-off person in the union. <laughs> yeah, he's also considered honorary. So if he does go to an event, they're like, "Oh, that guy, he he protects the house of the maker." He's the only one left. He's the only one he's, left. Yeah, and he probably tells stories too. He's like, "Yeah, they were all killed by an eater." <laughs> My brothers in arms. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. That. I love this character. Yeah, he's a great character. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to point out this is the second time that we've uh, ca- um, made a character spot of our uh, like an unnamed Gatesman. Yeah, the first one was Malika What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chief Warden Malika What? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Chief Warden Malika, Malika What? what? Say, say one thing for Joe. Say no. Say he knows how to write gatekeepers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Die is it? <laughs> Ill you say? <laughs> Love it, love it. Uh, so we're back to the chapter now, to our chapter read through, and we're looking at things from Logan's perspective now. And Bias is like, "This is it." They're in, I guess, they're in a room, um, or they're, <clears throat> excuse me, they're like in a hallway. But he uh, takes out the key again, and um, he's like, "You guys might want to prepare yourselves." And it's like, "For what?" <laughs> And then he just puts the key into a hole that doesn't exist, apparently. And one of the blocks that made up the walls just suddenly vanished. It just went right up to the ceiling with a crash. So everyone's like, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) That'd be so scary, man. Yeah. So it's like basically going to a room. So Bias goes into this room. He's like, don't touch anything. Don't go anywhere. And then Logan, and I love how Loka just goes straight away. <laughs> oh, maybe, 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 maybe he didn't mean me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, mm, maybe he meant for them to say, hey, fuck that. He just went in there. And it's like, like that awkward moment when you're at a party and your mate who you came with and you don't know anyone and they just like fuck off and you're just like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> do I just stand here now or do I follow you? I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, the, it's like a round chamber that they're in, and it's pretty bright. And um, the walls were like white stone, so this is a diff- This is different than what we're used to so far in the House of the Maker, right? Mm-hmm. It's pristine. The is perfectly like curved. You know, there's no uh, shoddy no. architecture here. And uh, how does it? What does it say? It says that there's like a narrow bridge that comes out from the passage with the steps leading upwards, ending at a tall white pillar rising from the water. Oh, because there's water in this somehow, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so <laughs> Logan crept up behind the Megas. Like, why would you creep up behind someone that can explode you? Don't do that. <laughs> and there are two things that were, uh, that were uh, laying in a thin layer of water. It was a square box. And the other was something stranger, which is like a weapon, right? Uh, Harrison, do you want to take over explaining this weapon or describing it? Um, yeah, it says this weapon is kind of like an axe. And it's a long shaft made with tiny metal tubes all twisted about each other like the stems of old vines. And at one end there is a scored grip, and on the other there's a flat piece of metal 
appears with a bunch of small holes, like a cheese grate. <laughs> like a cheese grater. That's always what I think about at the end of being. I was just um, going to say, Logan doesn't actually think it's a cheese grater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, just to clarify. <laughs> yeah, and it's interesting too, because it says it's like a beautiful thing. It's like, the best, the thing I always think about too, is like whenever you know it, it's like a weapon of some sort. And it's almost like an alien. It's like if you saw like a, a, a ray gun sitting on a table. You're like, you're like, holy crap, what is that? I want to touch it. <laughs> so Logan like goes to touch down on it and buys is like, bro, what are you doing? <laughs> and he's like, what is it? And he's like, it's a weapon. And he basically says that Canadians built it and then used it to kill Juvens. Um, and that one side is here. Well, within the circle of the world. And the other side is in the other is in the other side. <laughs> And that would make sense, right? You pull mm. pure magic and energy from the other side through the tube where it's contained, like what Canadius is able to do, um, and shoots it out the other end, um, which is a really cool thought to think about. Um, and apparently it's extremely powerful. If it killed somebody like Juvens, who was basically a demigod and was basically and more powerful than Baez, um, probably by about 10 times the amount, maybe. Um, mm. it's, it's pretty cool to think about, you know, that he doesn't just make architecture and weird rooms. He also makes weapons and it has the same marking that his own sword does. The mark mm. of Canadius. Yeah, it does. It is an interesting thought. And I do love this whole, break from what we've had so far you know so far we've had quite a mundane world very uh grim dark as they like to call it uh-huh. <laughs> you know just your typical city streets dark then dun- dark dungeons and big throne rooms and things like that and suddenly it's mm. just this big empty room that's covered in water and just a big pillow with a a great fucking weapon on it and everyone's just like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's just fantastic imagery it's great it uh, so that's the divider, and this the other item is a metal box, and <laughs> uh, yeah, Logan went to help pick it up, and it's heavy. He said it weighed more, it could have hardly weighed more if it was a block of so- solid iron, and apparently Cana- Can- Canadians forged it to be strong to keep the world safe from its contents. And what's in it? <gasps> Nothing yet. <laughs> Dun dun dun. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> nice then, bit of foreshadowing. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then we switch p- uh, point of views over to Giselle, who comes to terms with the fact that he doesn't hate Brent because he's just a puffed up idiot. And Gorse, <laughs> he doesn't hate Gorse because Gorse try- apparently tried his meager best to beat him. <sighs> what a cunt. And Veru's pompous old ass. No, no. Who he hates. Are the three men he's with in this goddamn house, this building, the house of the maker. He hates Glockta, obviously. He hates Baez and Logan. <laughs> he's just, he's like, he's had enough of this. He's had enough. He wants to go home. And then <laughs> they're all. Like, and I love how he just, like, despite the fact that Giselle has just seen all these beautiful, like, wonderful things that probably nobody else has seen before, he immediately just goes back to thinking about himself. Mm-hmm. And he's, yeah, and he's not appreciating anything. He's not even, like, taking time to consider where he's at. Uh, they're walking through the hallway. They see, it seems like a glimmer of light. They, so they run. Oh, Glockta, you know, Luthar runs towards it, and Glockta's behind him. And it t- turns out to be a balcony. And, you know, or a parapet. And they could see the Agrion. They could see everything. And it's just like, oh, man, it's amazing. And then Glockta looks worried. (laughs) And Giselle's like, what are you, scared of heights? And then just Glockta's like, fucking idiot. They were no steps. We didn't climb any steps. How did we get up here? (laughs) 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 And then Giselle's like, "Uh uh-oh. (laughs) <laughs> he did not think about that at all. Yeah, he didn't think about that at all. He's just like, <gasps> it, this is this that's is a where... terrifying thought. Yeah, like how the fuck did you get up there without <laughs> climbing any steps? There wasn't even an incline. <laughs> Nothing. Like you know, Glock that would have felt that he would have noticed this man is the he's the sworn enemy of steps. Or incline. yeah, that's a good point actually. Like he he hates stairs, so it makes sense that he's the one that notices. Yeah, 
<laughs> the um the interesting thing about this whole like whenever they get up here for me is just the sheer scale of it this is like an airplane point of view like they are yeah. thousands of feet in the air because they're saying that you know yeah they can see the square of marshals and it looks like a small wooden bowl and that you know the city everything looks still and that it's all just a gray mass the city down below them that I think sometimes people forget the actual scale of the House of the Maker. It is fucking insanely tall. Like that's mm-hmm. that's crazy. Mm-hmm. No wonder whenever fucking Canadius fell down, he was toast. <laughs> like goddamn, <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he had terminal velocity, <laughs> <laughs> and he was on fire, and he was, and on, he was fire. on fire. <laughs> uh, and w- we cut back to Logan's perspective real quick, just. F- to get some exposition from Baez where he talks about like, it was here that he fought uh, Canadius, uh, fire, steel, flesh, all that jazz. And he threw Ptolemy from the roof right before his very eyes. Like, how could you, who deserved that less than her? Never. Mm. Uh, such yeah, an innocent spirit. And I then, know. Uh, it's, it's almost like whenever somebody's like talking about a story because it's traumatic or talking about a story because they're t- trying to talk to themselves actually. Mm. And he talks about how he cast him down and the last of the sons of yous have passed from the world with all their secrets lost forever. Sorry, did you just say yous? No, he said ewes. <laughs> Is it ewes or ewes? It's ewes. It's ewes? Ewes. Ewes. Yeah, man. All right, okay. <laughs> Get it right, man. <laughs> Literally, fight, fight, fight. this is the only time I'm reading the goddamn audiobooks the first time. You cut me a break. Come to some... I'm just, I'm just, I'm just busting your balls. <laughs> At least I can spell everyone's names correctly. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and for the listeners, it's because every time I spell Jeff's name in the group chat, I, I spell it wrong on purpose, and it pisses them off. <laughs> I started it. It's my bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now George can't get enough. <laughs> it's never ending. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so you know he tells uh, okay, well you know it's all in the past anyway. So what can we do, right? So just seal it up and let's get out of here. <laughs> and then Logan's like, my father used to say the seeds of the past bear fruit in the present. And then Bias like, mm, your father's wise. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> and then. I do like uh, the word in there, the uh, the seeds of the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice, uh, that, there is nice, this nice product placement there. This whole <laughs> little like line here, right? This whole little small paragraph, mm-hmm. uh, especially that last those last two sentences are like for me so fucking good on so many levels that mm. we can't even express it in this in this episode yet. Because, mm. like you said, there's a play on words. There is the actual foreshadowing itself. It's I love the fact that Baez, this isn't even a big spoiler, but Baez uses this line on other people in the future and he uses it himself. Like I like that Baez, despite all of his, you know, oh, I've been around, I'm so wise, I'm so powerful, he still learns and he still is like, that's a good phrase. I don't mm-hmm. know. I just really like that whole little chap that little paragraph there is done really, really well. hmm It was. That's a fantastic point, Harrison. I never even realized that. I didn't think about that. Look at the depth is historical. Bring in the heat. Love it. Pop, pop, uh, pop. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> 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 so then, all right. So then our chapter uh, perspective switches over again to Glock. That, and he is in a rush. They're heading back out. They're, they're crossing the lobby. <laughs> and they, see, <laughs> they see the open door. And they're like, fuck this. They're all... They're good. They're you know they're going. They bo- they're booking it. Luther is already Luthar is already halfway <laughs> across the bridge, right? <laughs> Nine fingers Luthar. <laughs> You're not my man today. <laughs> then, uh, Nine fingers is like because he's carrying over the he's carrying the bridge the box over the bridge and he's muttering still alive in northern to himself. Um, and so <laughs> Glock, the, you know, he gets out and then Baez, he just strolls out of the tunnel and into open air looking smug as ever. <laughs> it's like, so Inquisitor, how did you find your trip into the house of the maker? And then he was just like a fucking nightmare. But he's like, eh, something to do in the morning, I guess. <laughs> and then he's and then Baez is like, do you still believe that I'm a liar or have your suspicions finally been laid to rest? And then he's like, honestly, doesn't even know. He honestly does not know what to believe. And then 
bias is like good. Knowing your ignorance is the first step to enlightenment, which is such a <sighs> pompous. It's, I mean, it is, but it's honestly the truth. It is. It is. It is. It, it is the truth. But just you know, bias means it in a very pompous way. You just know it. Come on. Come on. Oh, of course, yeah. <clears throat> um. So he's like, you better start across, huh? While I lock up, blah, blah, blah. And then by the time Glockta gets across the bridge safely, <laughs> Luthar, Luthar is hammering on the old gate. He's like, let us in, please. Let us in. He's just fucking losing his mind. <laughs> he looks like he's about to burst into tears. Uh, and then uh, the warden is like shocked. He opens the door. He's like, what the fuck? He's like, back so soon? And then Glockta's like, what are you talking about? And the guy's like, uh, I'm only halfway through my eggs. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, you've been gone for less than half an hour. That's his like, time scale. It's eight yeah. time. <laughs> how he's fast like, does it take him to get through eggs? Also, <laughs> how many eggs is this old man eating? Jesus yeah. Christ, it's been it's half it's an hour? Oh my like, God. Less than half an hour. So he's like, yeah, more like half a day. But then he looks and the sun was like, didn't move. So he's like, what the fuck? And then apparently Bias has said, like, the maker told him that time is all in the mind. And it's like, it's when you come out before you went in that you really start to worry. Which, what the fuck does that make sense? Like, that, that, that's incredible. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. And then, and then Glock is like, oh, enough with the riddles. Just tell me what you're after. And bias for the first time grinned like not for the first time but he grinned like really wide he's like you know what i like you i like you a lot i wouldn't be surprised if the only honest man left in this whole damn country so we should have a talk at some point you and i about what he wants and what glockta wants but not today <laughs> and then he just walks and leaves him in the lurch and that is where we end the chapter the house of the maker yay wow. yay <laughs> yay um <laughs> The only note that I had for this last little section that we haven't covered yet was the fact that, you know, <clears throat> no wonder Canadius was able to create such amazing things. If he built his house first thing, right? Mm -hmm. If time moves at what? Uh, a tenth of the speed in there? <laughs> maybe maybe a little less than that. Um, then Canadius had probably had the thousand or so years or even longer than that that he's been around. He's had even longer than that to actually create the things he's created. He's mm -hmm. had possibly the actual time that, that he's actually working on his projects, possibly, who knows, 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. It's just dude, uh Dude literally had about. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all the time <laughs> in the world. Mm -hmm. And it, I like how this really plays into Joe's sort of philosophy on, on magic, where it's sort of like, you know, you have to understand each individual thing in order to affect it. So, you know, Malachus quite has to learn all of the plants and how they work and all of this, because if you don't understand it, you can't control it. Right. So, Canadius being able to know that much about time, which is such a, you know, a fantastic concept. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's madness. It is. It's, it, it all adds to the whole sense of, like anybody who says the magic is here just for like convenience, I mean this this is all a part of that magic world. All the things we mentioned, you know, the long eye, mm -hmm. sorcerers, runes. I love how all that is there. All the pieces are there, and we're left to kind of put them together ourselves and figure out, you know, how it maybe works. And the mm -hmm. mystery of it is is very ominous, a little scary, and very cool and powerful. Yeah. So, how would you guys rate that chapter? Well. I'm going to give it an eight and a knuckle. I'm I'm holding it in for, you know, which I'm holding it in, you know, for which chapter is going to come up, but eight and a knuckle. I'm going to go with nine and nine. I, I, I know. I fucking love this chapter. Jeez, it's yeah. so good for the characters. There's mm -hmm. really good, uh, like, exposition and world building, but it's less ham-fisted than it has been previously. Not that I didn't like the other ones at all. I love the all the ways he does exposition, but this one is even more natural, scary. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, there's just a lot going on in this chapter, and there's so many things to look at. That's why we spent a whole episode on it. So I got to give it a 9 out of 9. Go for and it. I, I'm going to have to agree. 9 ah! out of 9 is mine. <laughs> Go for I'd, it. I'd give it more if I could, but he's only got nine fingers. So <laughs> we only got nine fingers. 
We only got nine fingers. <laughs> well, right. So I, I really, I, I, I'm really, really interested. And this is the chapter that brings me back to this book again and again mm-hmm. and again because I'm always waiting for this moment where Joe sort of finds his narrative voice. And I, yeah. I you know, because the first book is always the hardest. It yeah. is because you've got to introduce chapter... all these characters, and we do see a little bit of a failing in that where the plot in this book isn't exactly you know riveting it's very right. formulaic and the way that he goes about things even though there are you know subversions here and there the characters are what drives it forward and this is the first time where we've got all these characters in one place and they're actually doing something mm-hmm. and i just think that is it. he's just found it and it never goes downhill again from here yeah. That's a good point. I, I didn't point. think about it that way, George, but you're right. The entire last few chapters of this book, which is crazy that we're coming up on that already, but mm-hmm. the entire last few chapters of this book are like really, really good. I think the mm-hmm. last chapters in this book are like the best chapters in the book overall. Um, oh, for and, sure. Oh, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a good point, though, George. I didn't think about it that way. And it gives me hope because, it, you know, looking forward we've got so many good chapters we've got so many good moments coming up and uh yeah mm. yeah for sure <clears throat> nine out of nine nine out of nine for the two of you look at that i i wanted to give it but you know which one i'm gonna i'm gonna do it you for. can have more than one no 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 my first one i gotta <laughs> my first one i gotta save i gotta <laughs> he's better. saving it up i'm saving it's gonna it be up. a big one <laughs> it's gonna be big it's gonna be wild <laughs> um all right so let's move on to our spoiler slash question of the week slash whatever the fuck segment this is gonna interaction be with the community that's what yeah, we're calling this section. Community interaction <laughs> segment. That's what community, we're calling Yeah. Com- the community segment. Yeah. yeah. You know what? We are going to do. do, do. It's time the commu- for the community section. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there you go. And we, uh, Harrison, you want to take this over? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, give me a second. I accidentally exited out earlier of my stuff. I had it all pulled up and ready to go. Then I accidentally exited out. What kind of at this are you <laughs> hello everyone this is your lord chamberlain jeffrey just popping in just wanted to remind you that in this section we will be discussing spoilers and if you're reading the books for the first time and you don't want to be exposed or spoiled make sure to skip this this section and just go ahead to the end uh which will be in about 10 minutes 15 minutes but if you're a person that doesn't care then go ahead and live your best life and listen on in. All right. Just wanted to give you guys another heads up. Spoiler warning. So the community interaction segment. Uh, Harrison, go ahead and take it over. <laughs> yeah. So at, like we did last week, we posted a poll um, up on Reddit. On This time we also did it on Twitter and Instagram as well for everyone's favorite siege battles. Um, and we got quite a bit of interaction with it, which was awesome to see. So we have the Siege of Viserine, the Siege of Fantasarmo, Siege of Adua, Siege of Degasca, Siege of Carleon. Uh, the Siege of Carleon is kind of a halfway battle, halfway <laughs> actual siege. Um, but I, we put it in there because we didn't have it in last time for the battles. because There wasn't enough room. But the Siege of Deg- Degasca won firmly, at least on Reddit here, with 116 votes for it. Followed by Adjua, then Carleon, then Viserine, then Farnta's Armo. And then a lot of people, especially in the comment section, said that the battle in the high places should be considered a siege. And they are like, oh, it's so it's so good. Well, you should have put that one on there. Which, I guess, fair enough. I thought about putting it on here originally, but everybody had treated it like a battle and it won the vote last time. And I have no doubt if I put if I didn't put the battle of the high places on the battle tier list on the poll everyone would have said, where's the battle in the high places? <laughs> <So> <laughs> either I put it on both or I put it on one. So, uh, But still, uh, everyone apparently loves the battle in the high places. Jeff, it's what did the other fantastic. platforms think? Oh, on Twitter, on the Twitter, uh, 67... Okay, so on Twitter and Instagram, for some reason, I was only allowed to do four options for the poll, which is like, 
communist. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I had Viserine, Fantasarmo, Dagoska, and Adjua on there. Um, Dagoska won on Twitter with 67%, and Adjua came in second with 33%. And then no one else voted for the other two. <laughs> then for Instagram, we have same thing, four uh, options on Instagram. So 56% people said uh, Dagoska, 22% said Adjua, and 11% for both Fantasarmo and Viserine. So it looks like clean sweep for Dagoska. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's George's favorite one, isn't it, George? Then, oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. And I love this comment <laughs> that King Kong fifty two on Reddit, who just says, uh, "Why is there even a poll? We all know it's going to be Dagoska." <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's oh. true. This one wasn't as popular as the battles one, but it's still um, pretty. Gotta... Uh-huh. I think they've all got their merits. That's the thing. Yeah, I got a little think... optimism from that guy. Jesus. I mean, the only one that I would say, you know, we we see Viserine. Mm-hmm. And I love Viserine because we don't see it from any of the actual defenders' point of view or anybody that's making decisions. It's just, you're just watching it and it's happening and you can't really mm-hmm. do anything about it. Right. I find that really interesting. It's a really good bystander perspective that a lot of the other sieges don't have where they're just mm-hmm. like in a fiery city, in mm-hmm. a, a city under siege. And it, it does create um, a certain atmosphere in it that's really cool. Yeah. I yeah. especially love like um, the house that they're in, and the, you know the peasants that come along, and they just want to chill in the basement, and then they turn them in, and yeah, you bastard. see sort of yeah, and then you sort of see like the Viserine equivalent of the Inquisition, mm-hmm. yeah, and you see oh, yeah. that side of it as well. And I think that's a really interesting section in the, yep. in, in Best Served Cold. Mm-hmm. Monza could have saved Shiver's eye just by being a little bit more ruthless with those peasants. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, and Same. then fine. Yes. Fantasarmo, uh, George, you also said you really liked that one, didn't you? That's a great one. Oh, yes. Because we get the moment with Costco when he's just, he lures, um, is it Cesario? I can't I, remember. One of his uh, lieutenants. Yeah. In and that he tunnel. lures him down the tunnel. And he's just like, surprise, bitch, and just stabs him, <laughs> like whacks him over the head with a lamp. <laughs> yeah, it's a complete chaotic situation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he's running out. He's like, Rah! Yeah, that's the old like stereotype where you know he's running for the for cover and then yeah. it just doesn't go off and he's like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and then, no, actually, <laughs> yeah. It's hilarious. And then it actually does go off, which is great. And, and then, then you then... get the whole, you know, they're being ransacked by all the mercenaries and they're just trying to steal stuff and it's just like very comical. It's it's great. Yeah, it's it's honest, it's awesome. Fantasy it's Zorro. one that I think a lot of people are like, what the fuck? Fantas Armo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I had to look it up because I couldn't remember the name of it. because uh, it is more of a uh, this is the it's, fortress it's, outside of Talons, right? All right, yeah, right. yeah, and it's uh, it's like the set piece for like the entire last section of Best of Cold, but I don't think a lot mm. of people think about it as the siege. You just think, oh yes, yeah, the end of Best of Cold. Mm. Yeah, gotcha. Um, but and then of course Siege of Adua is, the, you know the 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 fin- the f- finale to the original trilogy, which My is sorry. very epic, and there's a lot of elements going on. Um. But also, it, it kind of ends in a weird way, in my opinion. Not in a negative way, but like it, it's kind of a weird ending. It's one you don't expect with yeah, uh, a nuclear it, bomb. Yeah, basically a nuclear bomb going off in the city. <laughs> I love that, and I love how you get the typical Deus Ex Machina with King with a Duke also just turning up, and being like, "All right, I'm here to save the day." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's got his fleet and shit, and uh, but, it's I mean, also it's probably that, the most epic one, in my opinion. Like, very <laughs> fantasy, like, charge, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Like, Polder's charge. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and it makes sense, like, Orso would show up to protect his daughter, you know, because she's now married yeah. to Giselle. Which, Malcolm. again, was Giselle's fucking kingly move. Anytime he makes a kingly decision, it's always a fucking badass one. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Because anytime he is like, oh, you know, you're staying here because you're the fucking queen, bitch. So, mm. sorry, yeah. you married me. Your fault. You should have married me. And then he <laughs> also is like... Not like she had a choice, though, man. <laughs> yeah. And then he leads the charge. We'll get the into charge. the ethics of that later. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll get into the... Yeah, and then he leads the charge down there, and I, I, I don't know. Just has a, a lot of good moments in that uh, scene. I especially love the moment where he just heedlessly charges into the Gurkish. Right. And like, the bias... <laughs> go ahead. Go well, ahead. what the fuck are you doing, you fucking idiot? <laughs> <laughs> 
I told you, you not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and Giselle's like, but I thought I did good. <laughs> you charged into that battle when I specifically requested you not to. You moron. <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah. well uh, so just to reiterate, Dagoska won, right? Yes. And then, yeah, finally, Dagoska, of course, fucking glocked to being in it. Like, glocked to carries the gospel and the gospel itself is so well paced it's so entertaining and you still feel that sense of like oh my god they're in a siege mm-hmm. mm. yeah. i definitely agree i mean to it's just such a slow build up and this is realistic as well sieges last for they can last for years they can you know and uh, to have this happen over the, the course of the first two-thirds of the book mm-hmm. or there's the first half of the book first half of the book was be generous and the whole back and forth with Glockter and Salt about in, in the letters is just fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the, the whole all the intrigue and the betrayals—it's just it's a fantastic piece of uh, writing. It is. It, no, it's great. That uh, fucking wish we could go back to the Gosca. Not in real life, but you know. And I, <laughs> I like too that, like you said, like seizures can last years, and normally it would have. In this instance, it could have lasted years, but mm-hmm. because of Gurkish of the Gurkish black powder. It adds a whole new element to all the sieges, and and mm. uh, Koska mm. even mentions that in Viserine. He's like, "Man, this black powder changes everything." Yeah, and I, uh, I I like that element in there of like world building too. That is like you're like, oh, there's a little bit. Of, you know, we see in the blade itself that oh, there's some gunpowder. Okay, and then inside of before the hang, it comes out swinging. You're like, oh shit, it's here. Gunpowder's <laughs> here. <laughs> oh shit. I, I like that Joe isn't going full on like, you know, everyone's having pistols and shit like that. I, I like that he, he's just keeping it m- mainly to. I like back. how it's it's it is realistic. Like it doesn't really matter what kind of weapon you have or anything like that. Mm-hmm. It's just do you have a weapon <laughs> and are you ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. next week or this week, you guys will um, see something of timeline. <laughs> So, yeah, the episode, when this comes out, you guys will see that there is a uh, poll out for the Bloody Nines outings, um, which uh, I'm pretty excited to put up on the poll and see what people think. That's our show, everyone. We want to thank you all for listening and supporting this podcast. This is a passion project, as you all know, for the three of us, and your support really does mean a lot to us. Join us next week as we cover Nobody's Dog and Each Man Worships Himself. And be sure to follow us on all of our social media. We're on Reddit, Twitter, Instagram. We're at YouTube now as well. So go and check out the YouTube channel. There's some really cool videos on there. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any podcast app that you use to listen to podcasts on. And please make sure to rate and review this podcast as it helps to spread our reach. Thank you all again for listening. Now that's craftsmanship.